What's up video bloggers? A couple of things to mention before I get into today's topic. Um, the compilation video that I've been working on, all the little pieces and snippets from our journey to New York City and back. Um, I'm almost done with them. The only problem I'm having right now is because one of the larger pieces, actually it's the end piece, um, has some music, at, actually bears the music of um, Paul McCartney, the Hey Jude song. And uh, there's this whole copyright infringement kind of thing with YouTube and they have to protect this and that and stuff like that, which I've emailed them about it, but they've never gotten back to me. But in any case, um, if I have to upload the New York City compilation video, then, you know, without it, then I will. But, um, and then the second shout out I want to give is to my good buddy, Neil Hatakri Hashtin. He's the guy that's either sitting here or sitting here. Um, on the 19th, the day before we set out to New York last month, um, I got really sick. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, I couldn't ingest anything, you know, no food or, or liquids. And I got severe chest pains and uh, he saved my ass and took me to the hospital and uh, really looked after me. And I want to give you a big shout out, Neil. Hey, hey, thank you so much, bro. Um, so today, because we're in the month of December, unfortunately... You know, um, December is a very sad month for me. It has nothing to do with Christmas and being apart from my family. And cause I never really bought into Christmas after like the age of eight. But uh, it's, it's, December is very bothersome for me because I have post traumatic stress disorder. And December is the month where all the anniversaries of all this shit that have actually, you know, made me like the kind of nervous person that I am. You know what? This is really hard for me to do. You know? Um, yes, I have post traumatic stress disorder. And uh, it sucks. It sucks sometimes. When it, uh, when it first crept up on me last year, which is when I first realized that I had it, well, because I went to see a therapist, um, I would go into work, the warehouse, and do my inventory between 7 to 9 o'clock. And between that time, I would just tune out. I'd have my headphones on and just zip my work along. But there were times while at work, that it became so increasingly difficult to even focus on the item numbers I was looking for. And I just break out into tears and end up on the ground, end up on the floor. Just bawling my eyes out. There were times that I couldn't even help it that, you know, my manager was right there, and he's talking to me about the things that we're going to be doing soon. And uh, I just start crying right there. Right there. And he always goes, I know what's going on, man. What's going on with you? I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm sad. I said, and, you know, I said, there's uh, all these, these flashbacks that are like really pummeling me and stuff like that. And he said, go home, man. I said, no, I'm fine. He goes, no, you're not. Go home. Take it easy and stuff. And uh, I was actually seeing a therapist at the time for my marriage counseling. And um, he wasn't he wasn't trained to treat people with post-traumatic stress disorder. But he did the trick. Um, just the thing, because <laughs> it's funny. It's so funny that he and I had so much in common and there were some things that he told me about his past that amazingly enough didn't trigger one of the worst memories who ever afflict me. Even though he talked about it from his own perspective of what happened to him when he was a kid, you know. And uh, it wasn't until I was driving out to Grafton and uh, past the stripper club, and there was a sleight of light 
this orange light that hit me and uh, it brought back every single detail in that memory. In the pool hall, I could hear the balls rolling on the felt. You know, you hear the chalk on the Q-tip. Every single detail, you know, the ice floating in the drinks, everything. And uh, I had to pull over and it sucked. I lost a lot of work because of this, because I couldn't, I couldn't stifle myself from crying. I would get up and I'd be crying immediately. It's like I couldn't escape the hurt that happened to me in my youth. You know, being abandoned by my biological father when I was two years old and then living in less than human conditions. <sighs> then uh, being beaten relentlessly by my stepfather as a child. And then on Christmas Day, about 10 years ago, And then, hmm, just want to let you know it's hard. You know, it, it's it's really difficult. And um, I mean, I haven't had a big crying burst since last year, since the end of April. You know, and I've learned how to tame the triggers. You know, how to tame the triggers when they come back to me and when they uh, when they just assault me, you know, by surprise. And so I've, you know, I've learned how to manage it. But just, I'm just letting you know that like December is a very, very awful month for me. Yeah. <sighs> and you know, my whole life, ever since I was a kid, my older sister would go and stay with our biological father. She felt this undeserved loyalty to him. And I'd always tell her from a young age, I'd tell her, you tell him that when I, when I grow up, I'm going to find him and I'm going to kill him. And she'd tell me, like, why do you have all this rage in you for a little kid? Why are you so angry all the time? And then, you know, from being abused, from being physically beaten, you know, just by the whim of my stepfather, you know. I mean, I know he was trying to discipline me because I was a rude and obnoxious punk. But, uh... You know, getting beaten sucks. So, um, yeah, I've I've used those two men my entire life as a well to tap into, and anger has always been my favorite drug. It just made me feel makes me feel so alive, um, and. Uh, I unfairly use them to charge me, you know, if I get really angry and if it has to get physical. I mean, I just tap into, it's like this never-ending source of, uh, of violence that I can use for my own, you know, for like my own use, basically. But um, while I was going through therapy, you know, uh, my therapist said, he said, you know what? 
Yes, your biological father was an asshole. For doing what he did when I was two, and for doing what he did when I was in my early 30s. And, uh, but he said, yes, he was an asshole, but you know what? Maybe that's just the capacity. That's just the, the capacity that he had for being a human being. And I thought about that. And I thought about my, my, my stepfather. My stepfather was brutally beaten also when he was a kid. And it's almost like, you know, it's this sick cycle, you know. And uh, it has to stop somewhere, you know. And uh, it's sad when you grow up and that's all you know. And that's what you think the world is supposed to be like. That that's what that's what you think what the world is like because the men that are the men that are supposed to be your role models are dicks. You know? But you know, I knew that that's not what the world was like because I knew what I felt like in here. I felt good and I felt love. And I felt like spreading the love and telling people how to love and everything. And so I knew that I could use them and using my parents growing up, you know, as not how to be, you know. When I was growing up in my, you know, in my house with my stepfather and my mom, I was forbidden to express emotion. And I told myself, you know, the moment I get the chance to get the hell out of here, I'm going to live my life open and honest and loving and caring and expressive and emotional. You know, so I realized my stepfather too, you know, that was, that was, that was his limit. You know, that was the capacity of what, of what he was. And then I learned after all this time, you know, I had, I always, I, I was going to go to my grave without forgiving these men, you know. My biological father died in 2006, uh, I'm sorry, 2007, February. And I thought to myself, what is hating him going to do? He's dead. It's in the past. Well, I didn't come across this until, until last year, but what is hating him going to do? And I thought to myself, you know what? If he never did the things that he did, if he never left me, I wouldn't have the character that I have today. If my dad never beat me, I wouldn't have been able to express the love that I express today. When I tell people truly and genuinely how much I feel for them. I, I don't just love people for who they are for me. You know, I love them for them existing on this planet and for the stuff that they haven't even taught me yet. So I forgive them. I forgive them both. You know, because if if they hadn't done what they did as as unfortunate as it is, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, it's a hard, hard pill to swallow, you know. But I did it. And I'm still surviving. I think that's the main part is that I'm still surviving. You know, whether or not if I get ambushed by my emotions, by my memories all over again, you know. If I remember the feeling of my stepfather grabbing me by my hair and trying to force me out the door and then him pummeling me in the face and in my chest relentlessly until I passed out. Or my stepfather holding a fucking Glock to my head and then playing with the hammer until I passed out from stress. 
a lot of other stuff. If you know somebody that has post-traumatic stress disorder or you feel might have post-traumatic stress disorder, don't just take them. Don't just tell them to go see a therapist. Go with them. We need accountability partners. And I want everybody that watches this video to take care. Juggernaut.